wildlife refuges, aka wildlife conservation areas, and anything with the name uh, wildlife refuge, nature preserve, wilderness area, ecological reserve, management area, sanctuary, protected wilderness area, um, anything like this is what we will be discussing today, and basically just uh, slightly different variations on the same type of thing, or any, any combination of these words is, um, uh, the idea is there seems to be a trend of weird patterns in areas with these titles, so we will look at some of these types of areas and uh, check out some examples. And then also uh, I, would, uh, I would include national parks and national monuments and anything with that type of name as well. Um, briefly, it's, I think these titles are kind of a frame game. They reframe the, um, the area and make us uh, contextualize it in a particular way. And we, um, we, it, the, the brain works weird or like the human mind. Like, I think we, um, when we hear like a special title like this, then we automatically write off any specialness about the area as, uh, associated with the, um, the official title somehow, if that made sense. Like, like if you see weird patterns in the area, you'll just say, oh, well, of course there's, it's a wilderness area. They're doing, uh, such and such operations, right? So we would just assume that. Um, and that's just one possibility. I mean, there's other possibilities. It's also possible that these areas are just given arbitrary designations, like just for fun or, um, or at random or who knows. And then there's also the, uh, the conventional aspect of, you know, when a city decides there's too much city and not enough nature, then, you know, someone on the city council can say, oh, let's make a wild wildlife preserve or something, open space preserve or whatever. So any number of possibilities here. I'm just presenting this because uh, I happen to notice a uh, trend of a lot of these areas that have these names are marked up with patterns. So let's go look at some of those. In Delaware, we have the Asa Woman Wildlife Area. And once you stop giggling, I will explain. Um, um, you're not giggling. I'm giggling. Ass a woman. Anyways, just these lines. Same thing I've showed you all up and down the East Coast. Pretty sure I showed you this example already. So I'm not going to take you here in Google Earth. We do see the spoil piles, presumably from some kind of dredging or levee building or something. Um, there's no indication of recent work here in uh, the historical photos in Google Earth, but that doesn't mean uh, they weren't built just prior to the first historical photo. So, um, uh, I don't know. And then here's the Tuckahoe Wildlife Management Area in New Jersey. This one's about as kooky as it gets. Uh, we have the angular rivers and um, um, I don't know, uh, some type of water management, presumably, and or uh, both natural and uh, artificial patterns, sometimes lining up. And I kind of discussed this place already as well in Google Earth, so I'm not going to take you here. It's just one good example of a wildlife um, protected area, which has uh, the lines, which may or may not be modern water management or any number of land recl reclamation or erosion prevention or any number of projects. And I'm also thinking it may be weirdness, like deliberate weirdness or um, where they forgot to clean up or something. Uh, but I think it's from some type of makeover or there's a good chance it's from some type of makeover uh, of the surface. And more of it. India, we've discussed this one already, the uh, Thandi Yakadu Wildlife Sanctuary. 
and many of these lines are new, uh, presumably most or all of them. Uh, I uh, It's just worth considering. So again, the protocol may be ongoing, the terraforming, but uh, it may just be conventional stuff. And it also may be um, both old and new patterns or multiple agendas, but the same pattern. Uh, who knows, really? Uh, I've kind of already talked quite a bit about that. White Oak Conservation Area near Yulee, Florida. So this is abandoned rice paddies, apparently. They were abandoned around 1850. So these have been around uh, over 150 years, and they still look pretty crisp. If you compare that to, like, these newer ones, or... Um, like these here, so we can try. We can maybe get an age on these, or say, well, at least they could be 150 years old, since these are 150 years old and they look kind of similar and fairly well defined still. So I guess we should also consider that some of these are rice patties, or something like that. Or another thing, I would like to mention. Uh, I think. There's a good chance that a lot of these areas have just been given um, false uh, denotations or um, uh, just false names or false explanations. So it's possible that this is not rice patties, but it's something else, and they just called it a rice patty. I actually think that it's pretty likely. So the rice patty thing is just a lie, and this is like some type of resurfacing or weird, I don't know, bewilderment protocol or who knows really. So there's, I would say there's a good chance this is not rice paddies, or rice farms, I, maybe the terraforming deal. And that's the one that's used in the thumbnail here. Louisiana uh, Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge. So obviously Louisiana is all cut up from oil and stuff, but potentially from other uh, activity as well, just parallel lines. And I've already showed you quite a bit of Louisiana, so we'll skip this one. But it's just one more example of, and then of course the, the Rockefellers, uh, pretty wealthy uh, family and organization and has kind of a reputation if you follow conspiracy stuff. But uh, aside from that, just the possibility that it's an arbitrary designation for a uh, an artificial area. El Caracol National Reserve near Mexico City. This is a retention basin for uh, water management purposes or irrigation or something. can't remember exactly. I read the Wikipedia article. Um, it's a concrete levee that spirals around. It is functional, or at least it was like, I don't know, 100 or 50 years ago or wh whenever. And uh, according to what I was reading, it's been like repurposed a whole bunch of times, so that's why we probably see a whole bunch of activity in this area. Uh, but I do want to go there real quick in Google Earth and take a look. So Mexico, Mexico City, and this thing is uh, right up. Get my place marks going. Oh, up here. So, here's the spiral guy, El Caracol, whatchamacallit, and so we have just the general look of it, of the area, is like, I'll cut up all the lines and everything, what we might call old grid, certainly probably a, t a ton of modern activity, so this may be 100% modern. I just want to throw out the possibility that it may be both, uh, like both modern and older stuff. So this is a concrete spiral. And first of all, they could have built it over older patterns. And second, um, the surrounding area has this kind of look to it. Let's look real quick in older photos. So I, I am seeing some change, I think. Just like this little guy. Oh yeah, and then all this. So it looks like some 
stuff was done recently. Uh, but prior to that, it looks like this uh, fine grid pattern has been there for a while. So that could be old, or it could just be modern conventional stuff just in the 1980s or 70s or something like that. And then I did want to show you uh, in this lake over here, there's um, these, these things, these squiggly lines uh, right here also. So these may be like some type of uh, water management or, you know, barriers, um, erosion prevention or something like that. Uh, there, it just kind of looks like unused and kind of in disrepair. So here's a good look at some of these, these lines here. And let's look at these in older photos. See, this is still there in 2004. This looks kind of different. This channel thing is still there in 2004. So, doesn't tell us a whole lot. How about these guys? Still there in 2004. And then. So I just think this lagoon or laguna or lake, it may be um, just, uh, they just dump some, or not necessarily a conspiracy, but maybe there's, the, this lake was created over older patterns that, so maybe the, the creation of the lake is not a conspiracy, but the, the patterns are or I guess any number of possibilities. And yeah, these fingers of land, here we go. It's a good look. It's 2012. Fortunately, we're not getting 2004. And then it looks like Maybe either the water level low, lowers in 2012 or there's some new activity picking up. I think the water level just uh, subsided or lowered. So we just see more of what's there. So I think some of this stuff is old weirdness potentially. And this is, I don't know if this is a wildlife preservation area. It's just uh, nearby to this. I just wanted to give this some context. Um, and so, yeah, so maybe some of these lines are old weirdness and maybe not, but that's about as far as we will get with this, I think. Old good pattern, who knows? All right, let's hop over to the images. Newport Back Bay in, uh, this is about 45 minutes from where I live, so, um, it's an interesting place. This is one where you don't really see that much until you look uh, super, super closely. And uh, it took me a while to, uh, to find stuff. So here's one particular patch of land there and you don't see much, right? Except, bam, there's a whole lot there. And it really took me looking at this for like, at this area, like these lines didn't really start jumping out at me until, um, so I've been looking at it for like an hour already. So if you don't see these right away, um, it's perfectly uh, natural, I guess. And like, here's one like this, uh, this gash here, or I don't know if it's a gash, but whatever it is. And then we have like sets of uh, parallel lines, like faintly like this, like going this way and lots of lines. Where else? Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole episode on this. Let's look at this. Because some of these are kind of hard to see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a whole episode on this. So um, 
that'll be like part two of this series, wildlife refuges. So we will check this out. And what else? Uh, I guess just one quick remark, uh, kind of a side tangent here. Uh, you see all these golf courses. Um, I had made like a, a crazy post or a, at least a comment on somebody's post like what uh, what if all golf courses in the world are retrofitted from uh, older previous patterns and uh, I, I think all is definitely a strong word um, even most may not be accurate but it wouldn't surprise me if some of uh, some golf courses are like built over these weird patterns and I guess pretty much everything is built over weird patterns so that's not really that interesting I guess but something about uh, golf courses and airports like I just get a uh, a feeling like that these things are plopped on top of old patterns but uh, I don't have any super strong examples on that just uh, food for thought um, Anyways, the, the Back Bay or Nature Reserve, we will look, give this area a pretty thorough look in Google Earth in the next video. All right, so Joshua Tree National Park in California. This one doesn't have like the same type of lines on the ground, I would say. At least I haven't looked at it too closely in Google Earth, but uh, these rocks uh, are suspicious to me, I would say. So this is just the general area. It's like a uh, big open landscape with big rock outcrops or big mountainous piles of rocks. And uh, so this image in particular, so see these wavies, these, uh, these contours, these curves, like uh, little vertical notches in the rock here. Certainly could be weathering um, or any number of geological things. Uh, we see that. Like I'm pretty sure you see what I'm talking about here. These uh, uh, gouges or grooves, these parallel grooves here. So it could be geological or weathering of some kind um, or any number of natural processes, volcanic even. Um, but I just wanted to compare it to Stonehenge. We have a very similar type of pattern on these uh, uh, the hinges or the stones, whatever they're called. And like right here, uh, not to mention all the other weird patterns on the stone here, but uh, there's a good look. We've got these ripples or ridges, not to mention all these uh, holes and lines and creases everywhere, kind of uh, miscellaneous gouges in these large stones. So I'm, I'm pretty sure Stonehenge is like, um, kind of fake stone or at least transmogrified like heavily modified natural stone so um, like using some kind of high tech maybe and then these patterns are either imposed um, as uh, embellishment or uh, for like for effect or something or they're a remnant of the construction method I rather think it's the first one that they're um, that they're stylistic they're deliberate um, weird patterns rather than remnants of the construction method. I could be wrong, but here in Joshua Tree we see a similar thing, I would say. So I'm saying basically all these rocks may be fake, like entire landscapes may just be like um, phony rock or at least heavily modified natural rock. So, and then uh, in Idaho we have this guy taking a hike and he shows us some very similar stuff uh, here, the ripples, and we'll see a couple examples of it. Uh, he, he has some good footage. Um, and then we have some more blatant, like linear grooves on some of the rocks as well. This being just one of the examples he shows. So we have these two like linear gashes or whatever, and, or grooves. So, so so I think it's more of an artificial calling card type thing. So Joshua Tree National Park, that may be just a, um, a fun 
innocent designation for a big uh, artificial landscape of uh, fake rocks or whatever. And same with Idaho, maybe, like this whole landscape here, very similar. So pretty far away, but same, same type of deal. So, and this may or may not be a national park, but I mean, who cares really? Uh, it's just uh, potentially a contrived landscape there in Idaho and uh, California, Joshua Tree. Okay, so let's, um, let's finish this topic or this video with a conversation about Polder. Uh, it is um, this type of stuff, and I want to talk about it in the context of this one I've talked about a couple times, the Sedas Purves uh, Nature Reserve in Latvia, or it might be Estonia or one of those, I, for, I forget, but uh, so it's kind of like this pattern, the crisscross hatchy um, reeds, and let me, um, I've got a bunch of photos of this place. But let me read you uh, a little bit about Polder and uh, what it is and what it's for and how it's made, just so we um, so we keep that in mind as we look at some of these lines on the ground in these wildlife preserves. So here's a few examples of Polder. It's a land uh, reclamation technique, so reclaiming lost lands or um, attempting to prevent land from being taken by the the water so it's to to keep the land stable and um well to keep it from turning from land into water or just eroding away so we have multiple different looks to it we have this kind of uh more irregular pattern and this uh the straighter patterns so uh uh, I'm going to read this. It'll be a little boring, but just bear with me. Empoldering is a method of reclaiming land from the sea. Empoldering involves the use of polders and is also a way to control floods. A polder is a piece of land in a low-lying area that has been reclaimed from a body of water by building dikes and drainage canals. Although empoldering is usually carried out in low-lying coastal areas, it can also be carried out in inland areas such as lakes and rivers. And this uh, Setas Purves area that is in, um, this is an inland area, like a wetland that's like, uh, um, it's not near the coast, so just for reference. Uh, it is commonly carried out in countries like the Netherlands where much of the country is below sea level and subject to flooding. About one fifth of the land of the Netherlands has been reclaimed from the sea. Their largest and most successful project is the blah blah blah. Holders have two distinct features. Firstly, they in, they're enclosed by dikes to keep the water out. The dikes also serve to protect the polder from erosion. Secondly, the polders are continually maintained by systems of drainage canals and pumps, which prevent them from being becoming waterlogged and hence suitable for cultivation. So there's, I guess, a considerable, considerable amount of maintenance involved in keeping these polders uh, effective. So uh, let me, well, I'll show you an image, give you a break from the, the words real quick. Here's some polder and zoom in real quick. We see, yeah, a lot of the lines that I might be tempted to classify as like the artificial weirdness and straight up, I will first of all say that I, I'm not 100% convinced that all of this polder is modern work, um, or at least that it's 100% uh, conventional or uh, innocent. So I think some of this may be uh, remnants of older, I don't know, older terraforming, whatever's going on with the terraforming deal. So I think some of this may be that, or it may just be modern polder. It's tough to say, but let's read real quick about the process by which these polders are created. So 
First, a dike is constructed around the area to be reclaimed to keep water from coming in. So I guess this would be the dike, more or less, maybe these. And then the area is drained using pumps and drainage canals. So here we have drainage canals, presumably. And reeds, a type of salt to tolerant plant, are sown by aircraft to help the soil form. So these, the reeds aren't as easy to see. Maybe there's no reeds there, but definitely in this Setos Purvs, Latvia area, there's uh, reeds pretty heavily. So this may be polder. Uh, here you can definitely see the reeds and for sure these uh, aquatic uh, grass or reeds, I guess. So uh, next, after three years, reeds are burnt and the ash is used as fertilizer for the soil. And after a period of 15 years, the polder is ready for growing crops, building houses, and constructing roads. So the polder uh, is a kind of a long-term move. It, uh, it takes up to 15 years, and it's a pretty heavy-duty operation. So, I mean, it may all be conventional stuff like this Wikipedia says. Um, there's a lot of stuff on Wikipedia that's not correct, but this thing, this may be correct, so, uh, yeah. Obviously, most stuff on Wikipedia is accurate, as far as I know. Um, just not the big things. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so set us purves. Uh, I'm looking at this area in terms of this type of phenomenon, the polder. It's not exactly the same, but we definitely see some similarities. We see the reeds, which uh, which some polders have, and uh, the canals, drainage canals. I mean, the whole area is flooded, so you can't really make the case that these are, well, I mean, maybe drainage canals, but they're not really draining much, or, uh, uh, well, this, uh, this area is abandoned, so that should be noted. It's been abandoned since like, I don't know, the 1950s or something. I think it was part of Stalin's like effort to reignite the peat industry. So uh, in this article, I found a description, uh, almost uninhabited as a result of peat extraction, a peculiar land cultural landscape has been created here consisting of peat extraction fields, bog ponds, and narrow gauge railway used for peat extraction. So we have these peat extraction fields and bog ponds. So I guess that's what this is, apparently. Um, I'm not 100% uh, sold on that. Uh, it obviously sounds plausible and very likely. Um, I'm just, you know, always skeptical of pretty much everything now. Uh, so peat extraction fields and bog ponds. And you... You see these things all over Europe. It's not just this one isolated place. There's a ton of these, just a whole bunch of them. So, um, so let's get a couple different angles here, a few different looks. Uh, here we go. Just a general look at the landscape. And here we see people for scale, so you get kind of a, a sense of how large this area is. And good aerial view there, you see the channels or canals, and here's a good look at the channel. Um, all right, and another good look. Pretty vast landscape here, just water and reeds, and that's about it. Um, I would feel like you could do quite a bit of peat extraction from a smaller area. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about peat extraction, obviously, but my I would assume you could get away with only utilizing a smaller patch of land. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but we see the remnants of these channels. So I'm suggesting that this is like a raising over of the land, possibly from uh, a result of this uh, resurfacing, terraforming thing. Um, also, maybe they just, like, when they get lazy or, or for whatever reason, they just, um, they create artificial patterns instead of natural patterns. Like, maybe they're, the algorithm they're using, like, automatically generates, like, both artificial-looking terrain and natural-looking terrain, 
and basically everything in between also, um, or sometimes. So this may just be like the their, their computer just said uh, put a field right here. That's what that's what we need for whatever we're trying to achieve. So they just plopped a field right there. Maybe I mean it's a million different ways to think about it and speculate. So good look at the channel here. And it's not maintained in current years. It's again, it's an abandoned area. It's just kind of a, like a park now or nature reserve. You just kind of go there and these people took their drone there. That's where these photos are from. So they just put their drone up and we see like these, like this mouth of the channel pretty wide in relation to the people, probably like 15 feet wide or so. Um, this one fairly wide as well. So pretty large scale operation here. And some other images. This one, good look at the, sorry, good look at the grooves. And again, the scale, just giving you some different uh, pictures here so you get a feel for the area. And the grooves, just kind of chilling there for the last 50 years, not doing much. So I think it's like in the Westworld uh, TV show, like in the series three preview, I don't know if series three is out yet, um, but uh, in the series three preview, you see like uh, the idea of rolling out a civilization or a culture, like at the push of a button more or less. So like they just like, uh, they have an, uh, a sophisticated process to create a, a backdrop of like wartime Germany or or any number of cultural landscapes like India or whatever, like for an adventure. So, uh, and may, my suggestion is that uh, maybe that's what's going on here. Like, may, may, it may be in a more continuous, like slow fashion, but I think there is a kind of seeding and uh, a seeding of civilization and, and uh, historical aesthetics or cultural aesthetics, and then also uh, strategic phasing out. So I think um, like over however many years, we may see a bunch of these fields popping up just as a, um, a change up, like a change up from one scene to the next scene, or like one phase of a game to the next phase of a game. And then they just kind of, this is like filler more or less, like backdrop or, or just, I don't know, somewhere you could, uh, have a scary campfire or something. I mean, uh, I'm going to try and find better and better ways to explain that. Uh, I'll be talking more about uh, culture and like the human aspect of it later. So I guess just check back later. And here, more look at the channels. Um, just dirt and water. Awesome. And then next couple images here. Not much to see. This guy, so we get a nice pan here. Uh, this is from a drone, f uh, drone video on YouTube I found. So we've got all these channels. Just uh, peat extraction ponds, apparently, or maybe something else. So these, whatever these are. And nice close up look here at these. It's just kind of a groove, a mound of earth and like a groove in between. So grooves in the ground. And then last image here, this is just a look at a long ditch or groove in the, or trench in the ground. And this one it has a different quality to it, a different look than the other grooves or uh, drainage canals or whatever they are. So this one, maybe f even for transportation or navigation, like a little, like for boats or whatever, um, I think, I don't know. I get a vibe from it that it's just like 
kind of more or less arbitrary filler feature or just something to spice up the landscape. Um, that's just one possibility that kind of makes sense to me. Or um, I don't, I, I'm just saying I don't know that it's necessarily associated with the peat extraction explanation. This seems like a, a, a bigger, I mean, what do I know about peat extraction? But this is just, uh, I guess just for reference, it's another type of channel that's in the area. So whatever. And all right, so now let's go over to Google Earth and look at set us proofs, proofs, excuse me, I have trouble pron pronouncing it, pronouncing it, and similar areas in this general area in Europe. So all the way over into Russia and also um, Belarus and all these areas, we have these uh, fairly ubiquitous uh, occurrence of these grid things that look like that, like these flooded, uh, flooded abandoned grids. So here's one, where is this, Russia maybe? Yeah, I believe so, yeah, this is Russia. And another one here. And see it there, it's just kind of like that. Not exactly the same, but similar. And it's gonna look different depending on the season, I think. So these will probably have different looks. There's a, I saw a 360 view of um, uh, what what one of these, what set us proofs look like in, in the winter time. It's just kind of grooves and snow. It's pretty cool, kind of different looking. But whatever's. And all right, so that's another one. Possibly farms here, but I mean, it's looking a lot like the uh, set us perfs example in the photos we we're just uh, browsing through. So thinking this is the same type of phenomenon. And that's, these are just like two random zooms I did. Here's more like way over here. So the idea is they're everywhere, like probably right here, right here, or at least a few of these places that are the same color. Uh, they all have the same kind of abandoned grid look to it. Oh, not, not right there. Um, maybe right here. Yeah, more of it here, possibly. And more grid lines. So this is, this is that, I think. This is that same thing. So these could all be peat bogs or peat extraction fields or some of them could be, I mean, that may be one. This area looking kind of interesting. Hmm, just uh, from overhead, it's very uh, worked over for sure. Could be modern. But uh, I just wanna give you a sense of the, this, um, the scale of it and the, how, how much of these there are, how many of them. So here's one, and across several countries we see basically the same thing, just abandoned uh, grid areas. So now let's try and find that one um, in the photos, set us proofs. So similar, similar deal here, possibly associated with whatever's going on here or some industrial thing, but I'm just um, skeptical as always. More of it here, and it's just gonna be basically more of the same from here on out. All these place marks are basically the same. This, this, let it load for a minute. So just these big areas of grooves in the ground. All right. Trying to get a nice close-up look here. And some tire tracks, so there's, there's modern stuff going on, whatever it is. Or else. Here. 
is this our uh, set as perfs? Maybe, I don't know. Let me check. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, but uh, this is up in Estonia. And we see more of it here, definitely over here, over here, over here, over here. So, uh, pretty ubiquitous thing. Just trying to demonstrate that. Hammer that home. Here we see more. Dur to dur. And let's check out this place mark. So, big old grids of land and water. Flooded landy water grids. And this looks like a this looks like a floppy disk. <laughs> I think this is a power plant or something, relay station or something like that. So there's that. And let's just take a brief look back in historical photos, see if there's any changes recently. 2006 looks basically the same. Just squared, rectangled land. Super. So let's check out the rest of these. Here we go. I think this is set us porves. Yeah, this is the this is the area. So this is now you can connect the the look in Google Earth to the look in the photos. So let's look at the photos real quick. So this kind of look, this is what we're dealing with, and from Google Earth, it looks like what we we're just looking at. So that looks like this from Google Earth. So here's these rows of reeds and also this other like cleaner look in the middle um, or a more um, intact look so I don't think this is like super old I definitely don't think this is like thousands of year years old or something I think it's hundreds at most. I just uh, don't know that I buy the conventional explanation. 2010 is the earliest we got and it looks like that. Excellent. Let's hit the rest of these. More grid lines, grooves. This is interesting. Here we see kind of a gridded up river way. This, these lines are definitely interesting, I would say. These right here, uh, borders and labels. Hmm, interesting. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is all part of the, the goofiness. straight lines and stuff. Could be anything, obviously, but uh, yeah, more of these grooves. This looking more like a smaller place or a smaller site, although maybe it's just flooded. Looks like it's flooded. So let's look back. Who knows? I mean, whatever. But yeah, I would say this whole surrounding area may be the weirdness as well. Like this, all this stuff. This is all striking me as like... It has the, the hallmarks and the, the style of the, the goofy terraforming, I would say. In my humble opinion. And I am humble, if I do say so myself. Because that joke's never been told. <clears throat> uh, all right. Uh, let me get the borders back on. And did I get this one? I don't think I got this one. 
Just yet another one, same type of deal, abandoned field of lines and grooves. Peat extraction, maybe all of these, peat extraction or some type of industrial thingamajig, but they're everywhere. I don't have all of them place marked because there's just too many. And hopefully I've demonstrated that. More abandoned stuff, just sitting in the middle of everything. And for some reason, when you grow up next to this stuff, I don't think you question it. Like, it's, oh, it's just the field by the place, you know? It's just the, the wetlands, and, and then you go about your day. You know what I mean? This one looks newer. It's a similar look, but like a newer, it's maybe a different operation. Hmm. Maybe a modern thing. Yeah, this is looking newer. These blocks are killing me. These blur blocks. So I think by 2011 we have more built. Yeah, so so whatever this is, there is some practical modern use for this. Apparently, unless it's just more arbitrary patterns in an ongoing unfolding weirdness, but I rat, uh, I don't know, who knows. Um, old grid pattern hole area, and I don't know if this is the same thing, this is over in, what, uh, I don't know what country this is, Kaliningrad, that's not a country. Um, maybe Lithuania, maybe Poland, or whatever country this is. But we've got, uh, well, that's, I guess that's a different type of phenomenon. But same type of idea here, just kind of goofy arbitrary patterns and lots of ridges and grooves and lines pretty much everywhere. Uh, marking up the whole landscape. Here's kind of a similar, like, parallel grooves type of thing. Uh, so, and the entire landscape basically crisscrossed with all this stuff. So just worth noting. Maybe it gives some context to it. How about up here? Yeah, more of the grid. And... Gritty. Gritty pattern. All right. Anything up here? Similar types of things. This looking more modern, maybe. All right, let's. And down into Belarus as well. Try and be brief on these, these ones. So just more. And I just saw another one right there when it loads. So that looking pretty similar. Just kind of an abandoned field of lines and grooves and stuff. More grids. And I think that's all I really want to show, but you get the picture. Um, likely a combination of modern and, or conventional and uh, unconventional explanations, I think. I do think there's potentially some kind of cover-up operation going on and or the protocol is just so subtle that it, it uh, happens on an ongoing basis just doing a little bit at a time maybe something like that uh, but definitely plenty of questionable patterns and Yeah, lines here could be 
old something or other. More lines than I can handle. Okay, so that's it for this video. And in the next video, we will look at Newport Back Bay in California and check out that area. All right, see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.